winning number 43. Yes! Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker and is two times more absorbent so you can use less. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Can you believe this? I did a song with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Tomorrow, something a whole lot of fun. My one-on-one -on -one with Heidi Klum talking about her musical collab with Snoop Dogg. I can't even call it. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> oh, of music, I'm going to need to hear some from the cast of fame, Mr. Frazier. You know what? You will. Good. Before they left, they gave us a private mini concert, and you can see the full performance at etonline.com. Take care, everybody. I learned from mistakes. Learn from mistakes. To make it eventually. Happening now. CPS has its rate increase as City Council approves the first rate hike in eight years today. But council members also tried to put pressure on the utility to make sure that there will be some changes. Testing sites are busy, so have you tried finding a home COVID test? Coming up, why you'll want to be careful shopping online. One more day to dress in layers tomorrow. Chilly in the morning, warm in the afternoon, but colder air arrives this weekend. Your forecast is coming up. The News at 5 starts right now. And we begin with breaking news on the far west side. First at 5, one person dead following a crash along Loop 1604 and FM 143. That is south of Highway 90. We do not know what caused this crash, but the Bear County Sheriff's Office is investigating it. We do know that Loop 1604 at Highway 90 and McDonough Lacoste Roads are or were shut down. We're working to learn some more information, and we will bring that to you as soon as it comes in. Bear County reaching a sad milestone today, surpassing 5,000 COVID-19 related deaths. Metro Health reporting nine more deaths, bringing the total to 5,006. There's also been 5,781 new cases, the seven day moving average now at 4,841. There are 982 patients hospitalized. That's up from yesterday's count. 205 are now in the ICU. 73 are on ventilators. And we also have big news on the push for COVID-19 vaccines. The United States Supreme Court blocking the Biden administration's vaccine and testing mandate for businesses with more than 100 employees. It would have required vaccination or weekly testing and mask wearing for about 80 million employees. The high court allowing vaccine mandates for most health care workers in the U.S. We have more to report on the fight against COVID-19 coming up, but first. New at five, your electric and gas bill is going up. In a pair of split votes today, City Council approving a two-part rate hike. It'll raise the average CPS energy bill by more than $5 a month. Yeah, the increase, which includes a 3.85% bump in the base rate and a higher fuel charge, takes effect on, effect on March 1st. Though the rate hike passed, Garrett Berger tells us council members tried to get some promises first. In the midst of a pandemic and less than a year after many customers were thrown into the dark and cold in the February freeze, the City Council raised CPS customers rates for the first time in eight years. This moment in time may be a very, very bad time, but when is it ever a good time for a rate increase? But with the utility saying it needed the higher fuel charge to pay for costs related to the freeze and the bump in the base rate for infrastructure, staffing and technology needs, Council voted 9 to 2 and 8 to 3 respectively for the two parts of the increase. After everything I've heard, I'm convinced that CPS has made the business case um, for the necessity of this. Cognizant of the record low trust in the utility, some members tried to get assurances on a variety of pressure points. A third party audit laying out a path to getting rid of the utility's coal power and restructuring rates. The city attorney, though, warned those kind of commitments weren't tied to the vote and aren't legally binding. District 5's Terry Castillo called it bad negotiating to get the utility the increase anyways. With approval, we as council are totally losing our leverage to make critical improvements to the rate structure as well as the organizational culture at CPS. Interim President and CEO Rudy Garza, though, told reporters he would follow through. The term leverage is unnecessary with an asset that you own. That's quite frankly, that's ridiculous. I've made commitments. You know, there's a lot of things I am, but uh, going back on my, my words, not one of them. And this isn't the last time CPS is going to be coming back for a rate increase. In the five year plan they laid out, they talked about coming back every other year. On City Council, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News.
The highly transmissible Omicron variant continuing to infect hundreds of thousands of people across the U.S., but President Biden promising today that help is on the way. Right now, thousands of military doctors and nurses being deployed to six states to help overwhelmed hospitals and health care workers. The government expected to start sending half a billion at home rapid tests and high quality masks sometime soon. We all wish that we could finally be done with wearing masks. I get it. But there is a, they're a really important tool to stop the spread. Another key part to preventing the spread of COVID testing in schools. The government also expected to ship millions of tests to schools across the country. And with Omicron exposure and infection surging, so was demand for those COVID-19 home test kits and scammers know it, Ursula. With new versions hitting the market, how do you know which is the best test to choose? It is such a good question, and that question leading federal authorities to issue a warning to you. And it goes double if you're buying your tests online. 12 Inner Size Marilyn Bartz explains what you can do to avoid buying a fake one. As Omicron surges, so does demand for testing. Deanna Cardoza came to this near downtown testing site. She couldn't find a home test. They are impossible to find an HEV. It has been going to Walgreens. They are gone. Seems it's a scavenger hunt to find the rapid home tests. With busy testing sites and a scarcity of home tests in stores, it's convenient to just shop online for a home test. But federal authorities are warning be careful. The Federal Trade Commission cautions that according to the FDA, fake and unauthorized at-home testing kits are popping up online. And the Better Business Bureau is getting reports of sneaky robocallers. They try to get uh, achieve some kind of buy-in saying there's been an indication in your area or your neighborhood that uh, you might you know, have a positive, uh, a series of positive tests. So we recommend you go to this website. A bogus website where they take your sensitive information and your money, but you get no test. Mike Moreno needs frequent testing for work, so he's looked online. This is hard. You got to know if it's, it's FDA approved and CDC approved. That's the only thing. And then you don't really know for sure. So how do you know? How can you avoid a fake? The FDA lists on its website all of the home test kits it's authorized for emergency use. Next, the FTC says check out the seller, check reviews, and put the company's name plus the word scam in the search bar. Finally, pay by credit card. If there's a problem, you can dispute the charge. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Now, if you need a COVID test and don't need rapid results, here's an option for you. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., the county opening a mass testing site at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall. The address right there on your screen. There's no appointment required. Results given in 24 to 48 hours. You can find more information about this testing site and others. All you have to do is head over to KSET.com. Accessing that article is easy, by the way. You just scan the QR code that you're seeing on your screen. As a result of the surge of cases, Komal ISD now extending its MLK break for students. Instead of a three-day weekend, they're going to have a four-day weekend. So they will not return until Wednesday of next week. Superintendent Andrew Kim says students should reset and recalibrate. In a letter, he says the extension will provide an opportunity for COVID cases to slow down and allow the district to conduct thorough campus cleaning and disinfection. The staff's going to return to work on Tuesday after the MLK holiday. Athletics, fine arts and other extracurricular events and practices will still take place. A man found dead at an apartment complex on New Year's Eve now identified as 42 year old Charles Bradley Shelton. The apartment complex located on North Pan Am Expressway near 410 and Eisenhower Road. San Antonio police say Shelton was sitting in his vehicle when two people came up to him and shot him. He died at the scene. The suspects have still not been found. Right now, we're working to learn the names of a man and a woman who were killed in a crash overnight. Castle Hills police saying the two were not wearing their seat belts when they slammed into a concrete barrier on Loop 410's ramp near military. Firefighters had to cut both victims out of the truck. They were both rushed to the hospital but did not survive. Investigators think the driver fell asleep or suffered a medical episode before crashing. San Antonio police dealing with a homicide rate that is at its highest since it's been in 27 years. Most of those cases unsolved. The victims 
seem to be getting younger and younger. Our Jaffe Gray spoke with one-on-one uh, -on -one with Chief William McManus about this, and he says he is taking steps to reduce these alarming numbers. In 2021, the city had 160 homicides, which is up 23% in comparison to 128 homicides in 2020. These are all people that, that have you know, been murdered by somebody. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says several of these cases are unsolved because most are spontaneous acts of violence. It seems that there's a lot of weapons out there and, and people are very, very um, eager to pull a gun when there's some type of altercation. Altercations like road rage or family violence in which a four month old died. SAPD says a majority of homicides in 2021, about three and four, were due to gun violence. Folks feel that there's lack of consequence. People need to take a step back, take a, take a deep breath, count to 10. Chief McManus says when it comes to solving cases and serving justice, officers run into complications, whether it's lack of cooperation from witnesses. They don't want to be retaliated against. Or from surviving victims. They want to settle it themselves. He says they are trying to reduce the number of homicides by mapping where crime happens most and breaking that down into micro districts to investigate. We want to stay long enough to hopefully be effective, but not long enough to uh, over police. He also believes more community engagement would help keep people out of trouble. Community groups and youth groups. I mean, I think any kind of engagement like that is valuable unless you're living a high risk lifestyle. Um, you know, you're you're safe in the city. Daphne Gray, case at 12 News. Well, you needed your jacket this morning, but it's felt a whole lot uh, like spring out there this afternoon. Weather watch for temperatures generally in the mid to upper 70s out in Del Rio. Warren called in with a temperature of 78, 77 in Lakey there in Real County. Low 70s in Universal City, 76 Bernie and 75 in Utopia. So warm out there, but comfortable with low humidity. Things will cool down quickly this evening, even though we're sitting in the 70s now. Once the sun goes down, temperatures will quickly fall through the 60s into the 50s and will start to off close to 40 on Friday morning. But dress in layers again tomorrow because we'll have another warm afternoon to wrap up the work week. Colder air still on pace to arrive this weekend, along with some big time wind on Saturday. We'll talk about the weekend forecast coming up in just a bit. No weather related issues out on the roadways for the evening commute. Samuel, how are things looking out there? Do have a few issues though, uh, Katie. This uh, just coming in. This is 35 southbound at New Braunfels Avenue. You can see uh, the text uh, crews out there uh, looking at uh, this incident. So keep that in mind again. 35 at New Braunfels Avenue. This is a uh, slowdown here 1604 and Highway 90. We told you about that crash earlier. 1604 southbound still closed at Highway 90. Steve Ursula. Thank you, Samuel. You know, it's almost tax season this year. There's a number of things that are challenging the Internal Revenue Service. Coming up, what experts say is your best bet to get that return so sooner rather than later? She took a shovel to the Comal County Democratic Party headquarters. Uh, what she did next and why Crime Stoppers is now looking for this woman. Coming up. I'm Myra Arthur here in the KSAT 12 newsroom as we have now passed that 5,000 mark for COVID-19 deaths in Bear County. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we're talking to the man whose wife was the very first person to die of the coronavirus here in our community. And I called her name. I said, Doris. And immediately she opened her eyes and looked at me. They were married 64 years how he's reflecting on these past two years and remembering his wife today. Plus, do you really have to wear an N95 mask to be protected? When is this surge expected to end? And you know you've heard people say this, Omicron isn't that bad, so what's the big deal if I get exposed? We're taking all of those questions to infectious disease Dr. Ruth Bergren in today's KSAT Q&A. That and more coming your way on the news at 6. Do you know who this is? Comal County Crime Stoppers wants you to turn her in. She got caught on camera smashing the door 
of the Comal County Democratic Party headquarters. It happened on Tuesday around three in the morning. You can see she uses a shovel, hits the door a couple of times. If you have any information, call the Comal County Crime Stoppers at 1-800-640-8422. It is the season of taxes, and this year the IRS facing its own challenges. Staff shortages paired with budget issues could have millions more tax returns backlogged. The IRS says it needs more funding. It doesn't have enough call center employees to answer calls, making things even more complicated, accounting for COVID relief and increase in child tax credits. They sent out half of it in 2021, which has to be reconciled on the 2021 tax return. So that's going to create a lot of chaos. So here's what you should know. Experts say you should file early. Applications are accepted starting January 24th. You can file electronically because paper forms take more time. This year's deadline, April 18th for most tax filers. Taking a look outside with live cam. Oh, don't let it end. It's such a pretty, pretty day. <laughs> it's it's really nice out there, uh, especially if you don't mind a little spring-like warmth here in uh, the middle of January. If you like today's weather, we'll get to do it all over again on Friday before things turn colder and very windy by the weekend. So let's jump right into your forecast. Low temperatures this morning, uh, a light freeze for parts of the hill country, all the way down to Carrizo Springs, low at the airport port was 36 the low up in New Braunfels 33 but look how we have rebounded this afternoon that is what sunshine and dry air will do for you many spots um, saw nearly a 40 degree swing in temperatures today just should, uh, sitting just shy of 80 in Catula 76 in San Antonio tomorrow another day to start with a light jacket in the morning and then short sleeves in the afternoon low 40s to start the day tomorrow up into the upper 70s again tomorrow afternoon so um, another day for layers on Friday, but things will be changing temperature wise as we get into the weekend. We'll shake the unseasonable warmth and get our highs below average this weekend. We're looking at highs only in the upper 50 Saturday and Sunday and then warming back up middle part of next week. But that's going to be a big change from tomorrow afternoon to Saturday afternoon. Thanks to our next cold front. Beautiful blue skies out there. It's also really quiet and pleasant all across the state of Texas, 75 in Waco, some upper 60s in the Panhandle, really nice weather across Texas today. Next storm system that will affect us here at home and also a big portion of the country is up in the Pacific Northwest here, bringing a little bit of wintry precipitation to some of the higher elevations there. This storm system will cause a big mess across parts of the deep south as we get into the weekend. It moves through our area as a cold front early in the day Saturday, so this cold front will be past and through our area for many of us or for most of us before the sun even comes up on Saturday. No rain for us here, but look what happens across parts of the deep south as we get into the weekend. That storm system pulling in some colder air will likely create some winter weather across parts of North Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia into parts of Tennessee, the Carolinas and Virginia. So very messy weather there here at home. Our focus really, especially on Saturday and this cold front is going to be the wind. Look at your wind gusts Saturday morning up to 40 45, 50 miles per hour at most. So it is going to be very windy to start the weekend. We will hold on to wind gusts up to about 50 miles per hour through about lunchtime on Saturday. As we get into the afternoon, numbers will start to drop a little bit, but essentially just consider Saturday a windy day from start to finish, but we will likely see the highest gusts during the first part of the day. So we have the winds. We are also going to have very low relative humidity. Our air is already pretty dry. This front coming through is going to bring in even drier air. So I'm going to step off quickly so you can see all the numbers here. Our relative humidity for a lot of us is going to start to drop to near 20% some places below 20%. And once you get there, pair that with the gusty winds that we anticipate. And that brings in the concern for fire danger on Saturday. So any open flames could easily start to spread. Outdoor burning of any kind is highly, highly, highly discouraged on Saturday because of how dry the air is going to be and how gusty those winds will be. So some changes coming this weekend. Tonight, it's going to be really nice out there. Light winds, temperatures quickly starting to drop here after the sun goes down. We'll start you off near 40 in the morning up to just shy of 80 tomorrow afternoon and then turning colder for the weekend. We anticipate the next widespread light freeze behind this front Saturday night and Sunday morning, guys.
Some pretty good temperature swings there. Thanks, Katie. All right. DeJounte cannot do it by himself. Yeah, it's just right. a shame he's having a breakout season. He had his career high last night and at the same time another triple-double, but it's all for not as a fall last night at home to start a seven-game home streak. And how healthy is Ezekiel Elliott going into the playoffs? Coming up. San Antonio Spurs have now lost four in a row, eight out of the last ten games as they opened a seven-game homestand last night with a loss of the worst team in the West, the Houston Rockets. And it came even after DeJounte Murray scored his seventh triple-double of the season, becoming only the third player in Spurs history to score a triple-double with 30 or more points in the company of Hall of Famer David Robinson and Alvin Robertson. Spurs got into a hole early, down 12 in the first quarter. It would be up to Brent Forbes to help dig them out. Three-pointer got the Spurs within three at the end of the first quarter, giving up 39 points out of the gate, countering with just 36. It would be Forbes again who would give the Spurs a lead in the second quarter with a 6-3 of the first half, 61-59. That's when DeJounte Murray gets started with a layup and the lead at halftime, 67-63 on a 20-7 run. Here's one of DJ's 11 assists on the night, finding Lonnie Walker, the four for the slam. This was part of an 8-0 run to build a nine-point Spurs lead, but the Rockets counter with a 13-4 run behind Eric Gordon's 31 points. Murray tried to will the Spurs back by himself, scoring 19 of his new career-high 32 points in the final period, including a 29-foot three-pointer to cut the Rockets lead to just four, but that's as close as the Spurs would get. 128-124 loss to Jaunty is on another level with no turnovers as well. He's an all-star. He's playing amazing. He's doing amazing things for us. Uh, and anything you can ask, he, he's doing it for us. Uh, I mean, big time basketball, I think. Uh, DeJounte Murray is definitely an all-star. I think he just understands the game in a different way probably now. It's probably a lot, a lot slower to him. You know, um, I mean, he's almost getting a triple double every game. That's, I think he's got the most in the league, if I'm not mistaken, up there. So, you know, he's, I think the game just slowed down for him and he under, understands it in a different way than he probably has, ever has. Yeah, his seven triple doubles right now are tied for second in the NBA. But what a performance so far this season. Again, a breakout season. And we'll talk about the all-star balloting coming up here. The voting by fans coming up tonight on the night beat. But there's next up for the Spurs, the Cavaliers, tomorrow night at 730 in the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys will be facing the seventh-ranked defense against the run when they host the San Francisco 49ers Sunday in AT&T Stadium in the first round of the NFL playoffs. Ezekiel Elliott is coming off his best performance since week five of the season when he rushed for 87 yards on 18 carries against Philly to finish with 1,002 yards in the regular season. Now the question is, how healthy is that knee heading into the postseason? I feel good. Um, I feel I feel I feel really good. Uh, knee knee feels feels solid. Uh, you know, not really getting any stiffness out of it anymore. Uh, just kind of wearing a brace. Just as a, I mean, it's it's worked up until this point, uh, and I felt good at felt good at, on it in it up until this point. Uh, so I mean, not gonna switch it up going into this game. And guess what the Houston Texans did today. They fired their head coach, David Gully. Really? Shock. <laughs> Remember told yesterday you. we yeah. said you never know with the Texans. <laughs> told you. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here on the 6 o'clock news.